us twice. First he made us, then he saved us. We're here twice. Three of them. You know, while we were talking on the job, this was a table fellowship, and it looked like chills started coming over me as I was thinking about how the scripture said that whom God foreknew. And to think that when He created your spirit before He sent it into your body, that He knew that that spirit would be contaminated with sin, He knew it would be exposed to temptation. Devils would come after him. Condemnation was set in on him. But in spite of it all, he knew that he was going to see to that that soul heard the gospel message. That, that that soul would hear how he rolled himself in flesh and died for him. They would return to him. He washed them in his blood and filled them with their spirit and they would be his all over again. I'm glad I'm his today. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God for the privilege of prayer. As we prepare to go before him in prayer, we have a request given to us for Sister Priscilla Wyatt. How's your husband doing, Sister? Is he home or is he still hospitalized? Brother Andrew is still hospitalized, but God has undertaken for him in Jesus' name. Glad to see Sister Kinslow in the midst and there are others that God has stretched out his hand and touched his hand. Right, we also received Reverend Sister Richardson who fell and broke her shoulder. Desire the saints to pray for her in Jesus' name. God is a prayer of answering God in the Old Testament. Moses did it. Jacob did it. David did it. Some of the others, when they got ready to pray, they would tell God what he said. They would tell God what he promised. Lord, you know, who promised Abraham and Isaac and God under the right of Israel. Moses reminded him, Lord, you told Abraham and Isaac and Jacob that you want to give their people a land. And they would remind God back what he said. That was their argument. That was the petition they stood on when he was getting ready to destroy Sodom. And Abraham was interceding for him. He appealed to the type of God he was. Shall not the judge of the whole earth do right? That's you, Lord. And you know, it, 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 those prayers got answered. But you know, the greatest argument or plea for the answer to our prayer in Jesus' name. When you realize that what you are asking is in accordance to the character of Jesus and what he has done for us, and you can pray and say in Jesus' name. And some of us already learned that lesson as children. Sometimes a child will go to their mother and ask for something, and she'd be cooking or whatnot. She said, go, go tell your daddy to give me 50 cents. And when they went in there and asked for it, daddy didn't say, what you want it for? She said, mama said, give me 50 cents. He'd go in his pocket and hand her 50 cents. You know, because she didn't go in her own name. She went in her daddy's name. And he said, whatsoever you ask in my name. Get in a word, find out you got a word for it, and then go and ask him for it in Jesus' name. And I declare he's a prayer answering God.
lost her sister. I pray that God would comfort her heart in Jesus' name. He's an answering God. And he's not hard to talk to. Brother Six Son, Brother Ezra Buffett and his wife, and some of them went out on the boat years ago. You remember? Boat turned over. Brother Seats went down with his son, two or three years old. Said he got down there and hit bottom. Looked his son in the face, underneath water. He couldn't swim, holding his son in his arms. Said he pushed himself up, hoping somebody he could throw his child to somebody. And when they cleared the water, he said his son was screaming and hollering. Went back down the second time. Saw his son's mouth open under the water. Realized the condition he was in. Pushed back up again. And the boy was hollering when they cleared the water. Went down that time. And he said his feet stuck in the mud. And he couldn't get out. And he said the Lord spoke to him and said, In all that has happened to you, you have not called on me for help yet.
to do it before we love the Lord. I'm certainly proud of Bishop Golda. I don't just say it here. I say it everywhere. He has been a mentor, a guide for my brother and I. My brother has now become the assistant presiding bishop in this organization. I have now become full bishop in this organization. All due to great men and the great man of God that you have in this pulpit that help keep us on the right track. Right. I'm grateful because whether you believe it or not, that I'm the preacher of the gospel. We will not survive. You hear what I'm saying? We will not survive to this great man of God. There's nothing too good for him. Shit, nothing be too good for him. Nothing great for him. Nothing. Y'all don't get back on things I'm not talking about. Nothing. It'd be too great for him to enjoy. Now, Bishop is very modest. Very modest. Y'all know him 52 years. Everybody, he don't want much. He said, no, no, that's all right, that's all right. But all oh, he don't take saving for me. And, and that way, I know he'll take it now. So. I know he'll take it now. And I'm one of his sons that he helped keep on the right track. Preached in Chicago at our home church over 30 years. Every week, Labor Day. Labor Day, Labor Day, night. Start for the usher. Preach my wife in. I'm a blessed man, y'all. Preach my wife in. 33 years ago. Preach the wife. She's been a lovely wife to me for 31 years. That's four sons, four grandchildren. Four grandchildren that we know anyway. <laughs> oh, that's right. You don't know when four women get grown. We've had a beautiful life together. And I know when your anniversary time, you're going to enjoy the Lord. Amen. This great, big, beautiful, paid for temple. This great, big, cathedral. Beautiful what the Lord has allowed him to do. Well, you couldn't have done it without your help. We're in this thing together. And I just take this time to say that you. Thank God for your being under. We said the first night of Bishop McVeary's funeral, five hours. And people still were fussing because they didn't get on program. Fussing. Preachers. Some bishops even got upset. They ain't let me say nothing. The next day, the final service, we spent about five hours. Some folks still got upset. They didn't let me say nothing. Well, if you don't have to say the thing at somebody's funeral, say something to them while they leave. You know what I'm saying? I'm preaching already. I'm not really, I'm not really preaching. Give them a kind word. Y'all just reach over right now and tell somebody I love you in Jesus. Hallelujah. Life is so short. They changed the late Bishop McMurray's clothes two or three times. Laid him out, he was sharp, back was sharp, but he didn't know nothing about that. <laughs> Folks standing up there just lying and crying. I might want to tell it like it is. Some folks stand up there just lying and crying. Fake tears. Some of them, some of them tears you buy in the store for your contacts, you know. Some people glad that you don't go fool yourself. Well, I tell folks, enjoy your life now. Spend your money on you and enjoy what God bless you with now. But when it's over, it's over. So God be the glory for our pastor, our shepherd, our friend, our mentor. God to be the glory. To be the glory. To be the glory. Yes, I should say, God be the
Our father left us, we were children. Isabella was 19. We had nowhere to turn, no mentors. But we could turn to Pop Gold. We could turn to other great men in Chicago that helped us. And I tell all the preachers now, learn to hear what these men of wisdom have to say. Because they've been where we're trying to go. And I'm glad I am a product of his ministry. Sitting last night talking to him, he's still full of so much wisdom, so much, so much power, so much. Talking to him 30 minutes is like going to seminary for two years. Isn't that right? That right somebody? It really is. I, I honor the Lord for his ministry. And I might just have been beating the air. You can't talk for folk that ain't doing nothing. But all Bishop Gold that do stand up in the wave and hang and me the work I've done. Y'all want to shout like crazy, but the Lord has blessed him to do it. Every devil in hell was against this church. God said, who can lay anything? To the top of my life. Jealous of your progress. My father, my father used to say, don't worry about backseat driving as long as you got the steering wheel, keep driving. <laughs> God bless you. I have a request for some to sing. She's going to sing tonight. And I'm going to try to testify this morning. And I'm at home here in this church. And she's going to sing tonight. And we all going to sing. We're going to have old time. Grace Church is my job. Old time Grace Church. Don't miss it tonight. Don't miss it tonight. We used to drive up here from Chicago to hear Bishop preach. 3026 Northwest. Y'all don't remember those days. Slip off LA and look up, we'd be back. We'd be left Chicago and slip off and be back for the evening service. Uh, to hear this great man preach to him and God bless you to come over here before you before you renovate. Slip in and hear the word of God, profound wisdom and gifted voice, singing and preaching, thrilling thousands across this world. Don't take it lightly. Thank God for how God has blessed you. Put those hands together. As an old hymn, I want to just worship song that I want to just leave here with you, and we all will catch it. And we're going to worship the Lord and I'm going into the word of the Lord. Take up from the psalm. says, Exalt the Lord our God. And worship at his holy hill. For Oh, no. 
When you worship God in the beauty of holiness, can't nobody worship like the saints. Other people are trying, they're trying to pick up our forms of worship and praise, but can't nobody really worship like the saints. When we lift our heads, heaven open it. The Lord reached out his hands and put our hands up. Because he wants us to worship him and praise him. He's not concerned about how pissed up you are this morning, how sharp you are. But if you have home, come on, let's worship him now. Because he's holy. He's holy.
church. That's a message that God put on my heart. Today, deviating from what I've been preaching a little this week, I feel impressed to be with you today, this morning, from this chapter. Four, Corinthians chapter, Second Corinthians chapter four, Saint Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter four, verse eight, nine and ten. I must begin reading at verse seven. And I need your prayers today. God will richly feed us. But we have this treasure. In earthen vessels, our Bible may read slightly different, reading from the open Bible, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in his hand. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but
was trying to encourage them that they are never left alone. Now I noticed some of my good St. Moya's friends. I said, hell, they kind of squinched a little bit. But hell's in the Bible. And that's where we're going if we don't live, right? And, and some of y'all right now are living in hell. You don't want to admit it, but it's a fact. You'd be surprised the people that come to our churches time to time that are very unhappy, very perplexed, suicidal, disturbed in their intellect. You'd be surprised the people that come in on Sundays and, and if it wasn't for the gospel that's preached from the pulpit. They would lose heart and faint by the way. That's why I hold so firmly, brothers and sisters, that the church, the ecclesia of the body of Christ called our believer, ought to be a happy institution. Some people come out of hell pits at home. No love, no food, no kindness, abuse physically, mentally, sexually. And when they come to church, we need to open our arms up and tell them you're in the right place at the right time. That's why I don't believe that when we come to church that we ought to, we ought to act mean and stuck up. Okay. You know how we can. I'm talking about those other folks that make it today. You know how they don't want to move over when somebody come in. I ain't talking about grace, I'm talking about greater than cartel. Folks that just, just act mean, act like they died for you. We, we don't need that in God's church because somebody may be here for the last time. We got to reach it. They got to help. So Paul, St. Paul, warned the church that had been easily swayed by false teachers to be on their guard, be steadfast in the gospel that he preached. It's amazing how we can have good church on Sunday. Hear good preaching on Sunday morning, Sunday evening. And then Sunday night. Sometimes we don't feel any better. Something wrong somewhere. Something wrong somewhere. Don't blame the preacher. Don't blame the choir. Blame yourself. Because I'm here to tell you, if you want help, there's help here for you. Praise the Lord. When the choir came in singing today, that song, I could not stay in that office because something down on the inside of me was telling me I'm yours, Lord. Everything I had, I'm yours. And, and, and I must say that we don't always understand what God is doing with us. And through us, you've been saying as long as I have these few 44 years, things are going to come to you that you really won't understand. Amen. See, my dear brother that got saved the other night, he's in here, y'all. He's here. Been here every night. Hey, wait a minute. Bless you, man. He's here. In the men's meeting yesterday, you know. We cannot tell folk like some of these food television preachers tell them that. You come over here, you ain't going to have no problem. Every family has problems. Can't land on another family. Because every family has problems. We can't tell you that as soon as you say that everything will be all right. And I'll tell you about me. Let me tell you about Brother Will. You know, there are some days since I've been saved, I haven't felt so safe. 
say that. I know. I said, babe, I feel like whipping somebody. Babe, I came to church with fighting on my mind. They messed with me one more Sunday. One He's going to have to restore me. He like two sisters in my own church. Some years ago, they got into a little scuffle. I won't call it a fight. I just call it a sanctified scuffle. <laughs> sister told her, say, you better leave me alone. Say, I'm going to plead the blood on you. She said, hey, yeah, if you lie on me one more Sunday, you're going to step in some blood.
that had happened to him as a servant to the Lord, we would have felt that he would be justified in being bitter, leaving the ministry, or having a nervous breakdown. But you got to go back because that's the more to the story. When you go back and pick up the rest of it, he says, we are not crushed. You got to read all of it. We are not in despair. We are not forsaken. We are not destroyed. In other words, the Lord is always there with me. Even though life had knocked him down and had knocked him out, he was still functioning. And that's the way it is with the children of God that know God. Children of God that know in whom you have believed. Even when you get knocked down, you know it ain't over. No, we never been knocked down, have you? Even when you get, you get scorned, you know it's not over. Even when you are perplexed and, 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 and don't know who to turn to, it's not over. Because the God that we serve said, I will not put my own you. That's what you get it out. And whatever God puts on you, he knows. We are never left to despair as long as we know God. And that's why I've been trying to tell some of us folk in here this week, you cannot know about God. It's too late to just know about God. It's too late to just have a shallow experience with God. It's time for every child of God to be rooted in God. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
some of y'all right now to just step up and just look around this crowd and just minister to them in your own way. Just, just tell them. Thank you. 